Hello, my name is Matthias Markowski and I will talk about the field homogeneity and isotropy analysis of a reverberation chamber equipped with a pair of hemispherical diffractors. This work has been submitted as a paper to the IMS Europe conference that should have taken place in Rome in early September 2020, but due to the pandemic has been moved to an online conference. So I will record my talk as a video. I would also like to give credit to my co-authors here which are Eike Zutau from uh, LumiLoop, a company that develops and manufactures very fast isotropic electric field probes, um, as well as Konstantin Pasha and Ralf Jacobs from the Technical University of Dresden, where we have done the measurements, and Ralf Wick, which is like me with the Otto von Guericke University in Magdeburg in Germany. So the talk is about reverberation chambers. Uh, this is an alternative measurement for radiated EMC tests. Um, their main advantage is that they offer high field strength for immunity test and you can also do robust measurements of total radiated power for emission or measure shielding efficiency or antenna efficiency. And all these measurements rely on a uniform, that means homogeneous and isotropic distribution of the field. And this is usually achieved by a rotating mode stirrer that changes the electromagnetic boundary conditions of this cavity resonator and turns this resonator into or this, this pure chamber into a reverberation chamber. And um, yeah, their biggest disadvantage is that it's very difficult to achieve this uniform field distribution or field uniformity at low frequencies where the wavelength is large in comparison with the chamber size, so there's a lower frequency limit. And uh, possible solutions to lower this low frequency limit is to build a larger chamber, which is obviously not possible in all cases. So another option is to use diffractors or diffusers that help the stirrer to get to achieve these uniform field distributions. So the idea of this work here goes back to the IMS Europe conference in 2017 in Angers in France where there was a workshop about reverb chambers and several papers like this one have been presented that propose the use of hemispherical diffractors um, to help to achieve better uh, field distribution. So you can see a cuboid chamber with the hemispherical diffractors um, and simulation of the field distribution inside and a statistical analysis of certain um, field components. And this goes back to at least 2013 or 2014 and also in later years uh, other authors have done certain or um, similar investigations um, and they also talk about chaotic cavities because the field inside somehow behaves or the field distribution has some chaotic behavior, um, the field components and again hemispheric diffractors. Uh, another paper here where also um, again the field statistics have been analyzed at certain positions with and without these hemispherical caps. Um, one paper that analyzed uh, energy localization effects inside ch such chambers. Um, then one work that uh, analyzed what happens if you move such a hemispherical cap around in this chamber and what is some kind of optimum position. Um, and again, one last work where you can see a cuboid chamber, um, some kind of working volume inside, and then a full sphere, a hemisphere, a quarter sphere, and just an eighth part of a sphere in one corner. And again, um, yeah, the field uniformity inside this chamber has been analyzed in terms of a simulation. And now one can say, okay, if we take a perfectly cuboid chamber uh, which has a very high degree of symmetry and then if we break up the symmetry for example by using the semispherical diffractors of course it's kind of obvious that it will help to improve the field uniformity homogeneity isotropy inside and so I sat there at this workshop and I thought okay we have some um, hemispheres some large copper hemispheres at our university in stock so why not mount them in one of our reverb chambers and do the same analysis that has been done here in all these works in terms of simulation by measurements. And this is what we did. So we took these um, copper hemispheres, mounted them into our chamber, 
and as you can already imagine from the picture they are quite small with respect to the chamber size here so we did the measurements but they, at the end we found out they did not really improve on they did not improve the homogeneity and isotropy of this chamber at all um, why yeah because they were just maybe they were just too small so they had 60 centimeter radius and the size of the chamber was 8 by 6 by 4 meters approximately uh, so probably they were just too small and this work has been presented as you can see here uh, at the MC Europe conference in Amsterdam in 2018 and so one year later or last year at the MC Europe in Barcelona um, other authors presented uh, other measurements where they have used four hemispheres and one full sphere that were also quite small in comparison with the chamber size and measured um, again something like the field uniformity but what they really did was they measured the scattering parameter uh, at this antenna port uh, S11 and um, analyzed this in terms of the ratio between the stirred and unstirred energy so they could only really indirectly um, show that maybe the field homogeneity in isotropy will improve because they've just measured at one position and one polarization with this antenna. Um, so the idea of this work that I present here is to repeat the same measurements with this uh, larger hemispheres, bring them to our colleagues at the Technical University in Dresden. Uh, they also have a reverb chamber that is uh, much smaller than our chamber and therefore also has a higher cavity resonance, 50 megahertz, uh, with respect to the 30 megahertz in our chamber, but approximately the same lowest usable frequency. If you want to see more details about this chamber, you can find it at this link here. So after this short introduction, I will give you some more details about the measurement setup and I will show some results about the field homogeneity and um, according to the standard validation, according to the IEC standard and also some field un unisotropy coefficients. And finally, I will draw some conclusions. So let's take a look at the measurement setup. This is the initial setup without the field probes with this two hemispheres mounted, one on the floor, one at the wall close to the door. And as you can see just from the picture, they are much larger now in comparison with the chamber size. If you want to uh, take a look at more photographs from a different point of view, um, you can find them at this Flickr link here. And this was the final setup. Here also the eight field probes are mounted at eight corners of another cuboid that somehow marks the working, vol working volume inside this chamber. And um, we have two logarithmic periodic dipole antennas that are used below one gigahertz and a pair of horn antennas that is used above one gigahertz. And here's the mode stirrer. And this is the view through the door. So here's this hemispherical cap that was mounted next to the door. And so two different configurations have been measured with and without these hemispheres. Um, these different antennas have been used as already mentioned and then because measuring um, sweeping through frequencies goes very fast we have measured a uh, high number of frequencies in steps of just 2 megahertz um, because these field probes as said also measure very fast a complete sweep just takes 45 seconds um, and the frequency band has been divided into subbands to switch between antennas and power amplifiers and then 120 stereo positions have been measured in steps of 3 degree. And yeah, so now let's analyze the results. At first we would calculate the input power uh, from the forward and reflected power and use this input power to normalize the field strings components and then calculate uh, for each frequency calculate some average um, over all the field probe locations and from these averages over the field probe locations and um, this average over all field probes and all components one can calculate the spatial standard deviations this whole procedure is also described in the IEC standard 61000-4-21 um, and then these spatial standard deviations are converted into decibels onto the dB scale. And now these values are displayed here um, in these plots and compared with the IC limit, which is this blue curve. And then in green and in red are the two measured curves with and without the hemispheres. And you can see 
um, that this chamber and the stirrer they work quite well so most of the values are or all the values here are below the limit um, but sometimes the chamber with the hemispheres like here behaves better because smaller standard deviation is better sometimes um, like here also the chamber without the hemispheres behaves better and on average we could say um, the the hemispheres do not really lead to um, a better behavior a better homogeneity of the field um, over a longer frequency range and the same can be seen for the y component and the same can be seen for the z component that in general behaves a little worse um, where some values overshoot this limit here and the same can also be seen for the analysis of all the 24 um, or all the three components from all the eight field probes and because more values are used here this curve has a smaller spread a less statistical noise than the curves before but again no big improvement no um, significant improvement due to the mounting of the hemispheres um, one last thing that can be shown here is the normalized electric field strength. The square of this is also proportional to the equality factor. So one can see that the curve with the hemispheres is um, maybe a little small on average. So the hemispheres um, introduce some losses due to the larger surface area. So they will lower the quality factor at least a tiny little bit. Um, so what can also be analyzed is the antenna validation factor, which is the spatial average um, of the average received power over all stirrer angles normalized to the input power. This is also somehow proportional to the quality factor. And again, we can see um, that yeah, the hemispheres lower the quality factor a little bit. There is this glitch here around 1.8 gigahertz. This is still under further investigation. And um, the same can be seen for the insertion loss, which is the same ratio, but with the maximum received power. Um, yeah, and again, the curve with the hemispheres is a little lower on average due to the little, uh, slightly smaller quality factor with this configuration. Um, so the second big analysis is the analysis of the field anisotropy coefficients. They can be calculated according to this formula and alpha and beta um, are the field components like x and y, uh, y and z or z and x. And so from these um, Cartesian anisotropy coefficients one can calculate the total anisotropy which is given in this formula here. And they can be displayed as a function of the frequency and in an ideal world they would be zero. So um, everything that departs from zero then the field has some anisotropy but again we can see that with and without the hemispheres it does not make such a huge difference um, sometimes the chamber with the hemispheres behaves better sometimes the chamber without the hemispheres behaves better and this is for this component x and y uh, for y and z and for z and x it's approximately the same and also for this total field anisotropy um, again here smaller is better um, there, there is no big difference between um, the configuration with and without the hemispheres so the hemispheres only have some very uh, marginal improvement of the field um, final analysis is the distribution of this anisotropic coefficients um, for the planar coefficients there's a theoretical um, cdf given by this unit slope and again one can see that um, the chamber behaves quite well but there is no sig no significant improvement due to this hemispheres for this component for the other planar component for the last planar component and also for the total field and isotropy one cannot see really a difference between the two configurations so the final conclusion is that there is no significant improvement of the field homogeneity and isotropy and only maybe a very marginal improvement for frequencies below one gigahertz. Uh, that might also be due to the decrease of the quality factor that is uh, because of the increase of the wall losses because of the larger surface area of these hemispheres. So open questions are, does this chamber really behave as a chaotic chamber? 
and where to place and how many of these hemispheres have to be placed to uh, really get a good improvement of the field homogeneity. So this brings me to the end. If you want to find the presentation slides and the raw data and the MATLAB programs that have been used for the analysis, you can look them up at my ResearchGate profile. Thank you.